Hello and welcome to Physical Science 20 Waves W1 Lesson. Introduction to waves. You need your calculator. And if we were in class, we'd be using the fan and the strobe, but you're probably watching this at home. Both particles and waves can transmit energy. The asteroid transmits a lot of energy to the planet when it hits the planet's surface. And the shock wave transmits that energy out across the planet's surface. Kinetic energy. Energy of an object due to its motion. The amount of kinetic energy depends on the object's speed and mass. We will talk a lot about kinetic energy next year in Physics 30. The kinetic energy is equal to half mass times velocity squared. How can you give an object more kinetic energy? You make it go faster. The faster the object, the more kinetic energy it has. A car and a semi are traveling at the same speed on the highway. How do their kinetic energies compare? The semi has more kinetic energy because it weighs more. The larger the mass, the more kinetic energy the object has. Remember, it said they are traveling the same speed. So if they're traveling the same speed, they have the same velocity. Whichever one is heavier will have more kinetic energy. Potential energy. Energy of an object due to its position. The amount of energy the object has depends on its mass and its displacement from the Earth. Potential energy is equal to mass times gravity multiplied by height. How can you give an object more potential energy? Lifted higher off the Earth's surface. The more it is removed from the Earth's center of gravity, the more potential energy the object has. A bowling ball and a tennis ball are held over the edge of the school. How do their potential energies compare? Both the bowling ball and the tennis ball are held at the same height. They have the same displacement from the Earth's center of gravity. So, the bowling ball has more potential energy because it has more mass. The more an object weighs, the more potential energy it has. There are two types of waves, electromagnetic and mechanical. Electromagnetic waves do not require a medium. That means they do not need a material to get from one point to another. And they travel 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in the vacuum. Mechanical waves require a medium. They need a material in order to get from point A to point B. Light waves are electromagnetic waves. And we know this because we can see the sun. And light from the sun travels through empty space to get to Earth. The only difference between red light and blue light is that red light has a longer wavelength than blue light. Earthquakes are mechanical waves because you require earth in order to have an earthquake. Radio waves are electromagnetic waves. They are just like light waves, except the wavelength is so long that our eyes cannot see them. Radio waves include things like FM and AM that we pick up in our car. Microwaves are like radio waves. They are longer than what the eye can see. They are shorter than radio waves, but still longer than what people can see. Ocean waves require the ocean in order for there to be waves. Radar is also an electromagnetic wave that is too long for people to see. It is shorter than microwaves and radio waves, but too long for the human eye to detect. Cellular phone waves, well, cellular phones receive information by FM, which is a form of radio wave. We communicate with the remote controls through radio waves, which we have already determined are electromagnetic waves. Rider game waves. Rider game waves exist because there are rider fans. I did not choose Argo games because you cannot have a fan wave at an Argo game because typically there's no one in the stands. Rope waves. Like if you're using a skipping rope, 
you require the skipping rope in order to make the wave. So those are mechanical waves. Satellite dishes use radio waves, which we have already determined are electromagnetic waves. Slinky waves. Well, in order to make a wave with a slinky, you need to have a slinky, so it requires a medium. Sonar usually gives students trouble because we're not exactly sure what sonar is. Sonar was developed by the military when they wanted the Navy to be able to locate submarines. Sonar works by a ship sending out a signal, a sound, in water, and then they time how long it takes for that sound to travel through the water, hit the submarine, and then bounce back and be picked up by the receiver at the bottom of the ship. Ultrasound. Ultrasound sends sounds into our body, and depending on the density of the organs that are hit by that sound, it produces an image that doctors can read. And last is x-ray. X-rays are like the light rays that we can see, only their wavelength is so short our eyes cannot detect them. So they also do not require a medium and they can travel through the vacuum of space. There are three types of mechanical waves. The first type of wave is a transverse wave. Movement is perpendicular to the direction of the wave. In the graphic you can see the waves are traveling to the right, but the individual particles are only going up and down. Perpendicular movement to the direction the wave is traveling. Second type of wave we'll talk about is a longitudinal. The movement of the wave is in the same direction as the individual particles. If you take a look at the YouTube video, it gives you a very good visual representation of what a longitudinal wave looks like. This is how sound works. Your speaker pushes the air molecules towards and away from the speaker. That pushes the air molecules between your ear and the speaker back and forth in between you and the speaker. So the sound waves are coming towards you. The air molecules are moving towards and away from you. They're moving parallel to the direction of the sound. The third type of mechanical wave is a surface wave. These are waves that occur between two mediums. They move forward and backward as well as up and down at the same time. The particles near the surface take an orbital path and those further into the medium do not move at all. If you've ever gone diving, you will have noticed that, that when you're at the surface, you bob up and down and move around. But if you travel below the water, you will hit a point where you cannot feel any of the surface action at all and the whole entire ocean appears to be still. The production of waves. Two terms we need to know, a wave pulse. A wave pulse is a single disturbance sent through a medium, like if you sent a single jolt down the slinky. The traveling wave has a simple harmonic motion due to repeated wave pulses. So you're continuously sending pulses down the slinky. Make sure you have your booklet and label the parts of the wave. The highest points of the wave are called the crest. The lowest point on the waves are called troughs. The distance from crest to rest position, or from the rest position to trough, is called an amplitude. The line down the middle is called the rest position. Imagine this is a slinky. If you stopped shaking it, the entire slinky would sit along that flat line called the rest position. Wavelength is symbolized by the Greek symbol lambda. The wavelength is the shortest distance between two points where the cycle begins to repeat itself. This could be the distance from crest to crest, or measured from the distance from trough to trough. The amplitude of a wave is proportional to the amount of energy the wave has. High energy means you've got large amplitudes. Low energy means you have small amplitudes. Of course, there is more energy put into a slinky the wider I swing my arm. 
higher energy, higher amplitude. The formulas we're going to use to complete W1 and W2 are on the following slides. Big T is period. It is measured in seconds. It is the amount of time that it takes for one cycle to be completed. So period is measured in seconds. Small t is time. It is also measured in seconds. Cycles are the number of times the motion has repeated itself. This carries no units. Frequency is symbolized by a small f. It is the number of cycles that have occurred in one second. Frequency is measured in hertz. Cycles, we already talked about, it has no unit, and time is measured in seconds. So frequency is cycles divided by time, which would give you 1 over s for a unit, which could also be written as 1 divided by s to the power of positive 1. You may recall in math class that you move numbers from the numerator to the denominator or vice versa. When this happens, the exponent changes its sign. So if it has a positive exponent, it becomes negative. If the exponent is negative, it then becomes positive. So if we move s to the positive 1 from the denominator to the numerator, it then becomes s to the minus 1 divided by 1. And anything divided by 1 is equal to itself, so that is then equal to s to the power of negative 1. Typically, instead of writing s to the minus 1, we write frequency with the units of hertz, symbolized by a capital H and a small z. Look up the following clips. How does this happen? When you watch a movie, there are 24 pictures flashed up on the screen every second. Live TV typically flashes up 30 pictures a second, sometimes up to 60 pictures in a second. New high-end devices flash up to 120 pictures in a second. Now, when you go to a movie theater, since there are only 24 pictures flashed up on the screen every second, when the camera moves quickly, sometimes you can notice that the screen seems to jump. Now, in the case of the helicopter, if they were shooting that on film, that means it's taking a picture 24 times every second. And if that propeller on the top of the helicopter is spinning around 24 times every second, that means that the camera takes a picture of the blade in the exact same spot each time. Because it takes a picture, the entire blade spins around to the original spot, it takes a picture again, it spins all the way around to the original spot, it takes a picture again. And that is why, when you look back in your camera, it appears as though the blades on the helicopter were not moving. In the case of the Bugatti, the tires appear to be moving backwards because the camera takes a picture of the wheel just before it reaches its original position again. Since frequency equals cycles divided by time and period equals time divided by cycles, Frequency and period are then inversely related. As the period decreases, frequency increases, and vice versa. Also, if given frequency, I can find period, and if given period, I can find frequency.